Hello students, I'm going to try something different here. I'm going to make a video of me doing an example of my X method from the notes. Hopefully this helps out. Again, why do we have to use a different method to solve quadratic equations? It's because of these two numbers right here. We can't use normal methods to solve these because if I try to get X by itself, it doesn't work out because I have an X squared term and a, and a 17X they get in the way. So. This is why um, you learn different methods, and this method I like. The books show how to factor, but they don't ever show like an organized way to do this. So I have, I put this big X underneath, and then I fill in these four spots made by the X. It kind of is an organization method. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in the coefficient, which is 17, in the top of the box. If you check the notes, that was the second step after I make the X. I drop that middle number down in here. A uh, quick reminder, this only works if this is in standard form. So as long as this is in that order where the X squared comes first, 17X next, and the 70's third, that's the only way this method is going to work. So the next thing I do is I'm going to take the value here and the value here, and I'm going to multiply those two. Now, in all the ones you have in this assignment, that's a 1. So basically, I'm just writing the last number, 70, in that spot. Okay, now once I write 70, I'm looking for two numbers to fill the sides of the x. So those two numbers are going to be um, numbers that add to be 17, and I'm going to multiply to be 70. Now off to the side up here in the corner I'm going to kind of write some things that multiply to be 70. Always start with things that multiply. If you try to do the adding there's tons of things that add to be 17 but there's not a lot of numbers that multiply to be 70. We got 1 and 70, 2 and 35, 7 and 10. As soon as I write 7 and 10 you can obviously see 7 plus 10. Oh that works. So I'm going to slide those two numbers in there. 7 and 10. Now, once I have those numbers, you just have to identify, are they positives? Yes, they are. I'm going to put a little plus sign to remind you that they're positives. Now I'm going to write the factors on the bottom. So the factors just involve x, because there is an x there, and whatever answer you put here, plus 7. And the other one, it would be x plus 10. Where did the plus 10 come from? Right there equals zero because it would equal to zero up there. So I'm just rewriting that black equation into this factored form of the equation. Now why would I do that? Well now I can say using that zero product method that x plus seven equals zero and x plus ten equals zero and I can solve those two small equations to get the solutions negative seven and negative ten. All right. Or if you watch the bottom equation, now I'm going to do this one more time. Now, real quick, it is not helpful if there's a negative sign in front of the x squared term. So anytime that happens, I like to change all the signs. So I'm going to change every sign right here, here, here. And I don't have to change 0 because 0 doesn't have a sign. So I'm going to change every sign and rewrite that underneath in black here. I'm going to write x squared minus 4x minus 45 equals 0. All right. I'm going to draw a large x underneath. And I'm going to drop now this coefficient, negative 4, into that spot. And again, there's a 1 here. I'm going to multiply these two, negative 45. Again, I want you to look for numbers that add or multiply to be negative 4 or 5. I'll put an M for multiply, A for add here. So up in the corner, what multiplies to be 45? I've got 1 and 45. 3 and 15, 15 minus 3, that doesn't work, I got 
9 and 5. 9 and 5. Look at that. 9 minus 5 is 4. So now I just to figure out what signs do I give them because I'm actually adding these two numbers together. I'm going to make this a negative 9 and a positive 5. A okay, negative 9 plus 5 gives me a negative 4. Negative 9 times 5 is negative 45. So that works. All right, now I'm going to write my factors. Again, we use x. So I've got x minus 9 and x plus 5 still equals 0. Why is that important? Because now I can write two small equations. x minus 9 equals 0 and x plus 5 equals 0. And so my two solutions would be x equals 9 and x equals negative 5.